of a nook. Today we are finally working on our very first house project. We are starting with the backsplash in our kitchen and we are so excited to finally get the ball rolling and to start making our house look and feel the way that we want it to. So when it came to a backsplash, I knew I wanted something that wasn't too loud or too crazy, but that also kind of helped bring uh, a little bit more texture and dynamic into our kitchen. And so I'll tell you, I had a heck of a time finding the right tile for exactly what I wanted, but we finally found it and I am so, so excited and so ready to get this done. We're using a super simple method that will be really quick and easy that anyone can use and also help save a ton of money. So without further ado, let's get into it. First things first, the wall. Uh, we do not have a shiny sheen glossy wall, which is good when using this stuff, but if you do have a shiny sheen painted wall, it's okay. Uh, there are certain washes you can use that are really simple and you just do a quick pass over it with a rag and water. And I think it's called like trisodium phosphate. So look into it. It's really simple. It's not a big deal. What I wanted to do was just rough up the surface, give it a little bit more texture for the um, mortar to stick to. Okay, so we finished sanding um, the wall. Obviously there's a lot of dust on the wall, so I'm just gonna take a microfiber towel. I got it wet. I'm just gonna wipe down the wall really quick to get some of that dust off and then it'll dry out quickly and then we'll be good to go. This is the Carrera marble, which is kind of brittle. It's a little bit soft. So you gotta make sure you have the right um, blade for your saw. So this one right here, as you can see, is a four and a half inch blade that we use on the Harbor Freight tile saw as well that we will show you in a minute. Um, it's a wet cut saw and it, it'll tell you right on it what it's good for. If you look right here on the back, it says it's good for tile, it's good for marble. Um, some of the other ones do not work on marble because they will chip the marble like crazy. This is the tile cutter I bought from Harbor Freight. It's $50 and oftentimes if you do find the right tools, you can spend less on owning the tool than you would on renting the tool. As you can see, I did a test cut earlier on this one here. And like I said, this marble is gritty and, and vulnerable. Um, so it will be messy. And if you look in here, this is my well of water. And this is what keeps everything clean and cool and helps reduce the brittleness of what you're cutting. So this is a perfect example of what I mean by it's a brittle stone. I have a fear that I'm going to be dealing with this kind of stuff all day long. I'm gonna finish cutting that off and then I will have one vertical piece right here to work with. I think the most important step in all of this is laying out the tiles and organizing them beforehand so that we know that everything's gonna look really cohesive and there's not too many light tiles next to each other, too many dark tiles next to each other. So right now I'm going through and I'm laying them out in each section for Jordan so that he knows how and where to place them um, so that they look balanced, that they kind of look eclectic and like a, I just want it to look natural and eclectic, you know, without, without being too thought through. Just a couple tools for success here. These are 1 8 inch spacers that we will put between each tile so that you can make sure you get the right spacing between each one. And I bought this entire bag for like $4 at Home Depot. This is your trowel. And pretty much what we're doing with this is this is where we will get the putty going. We'll spread it up here. Um, these right here kind of help for an even depth so that when you're putting them all, you can kind of keep them even. Katie wants me to do this like special treatment on it to where they're not all perfectly flush and even. So we'll see how that goes. It's just gonna be a little trial and error. Um, I'm using the Simple Set Thin Set Mortar Mix. Um, there are different options. Omni Grip is a very common one. This one was like 15 bucks cheaper at Home Depot this time. So I don't think you can really go wrong between the two, but do reviews on both for what your specific application is. Mm. So you wanna keep it at like a 45 degree angle and you just wanna scrape it on, okay? It's obviously gonna be messy, so we'll need to be cleaning that stuff up as we go. I'm gonna take this side, I'm just gonna scratch it. Okay. You ready for the first piece, Katie? <gasps> I'm the ready. first of many. So we've got the first piece officially stuck to the wall here. Okay, so I'm gonna put that in there. That one's already popping out a little bit further. I'm not gonna press it too hard because it will press in. Okay. Two down. 
All right, here we go. So here's what it's looking like right now. What's happening with all these splotches is the tile is very absorbent. So it's absorbing the moisture from the mortar behind it. And it's actually making the tiles go a lot darker as well because they're wet right now. So this light color right here is more accurate to the coloring. And then obviously these splotches will all go away is the hope when it all dries. So as you can see here, we're getting through it. Uh, these spacers are what's keeping everything kind of even. A lot of professionals I'm sure would do this whole job with this right here. I'm a little clumsy with this big trowel. So I found it better for me personally to be working with a smaller knife. I'm kind of getting the spots specific that I want. And I go through and I score it, right? Like that. So I'm pretty much just using the tile trowel to score it. Probably the most challenging thing to take care of is getting these 90 degree cuts inside. As you can see, they're not super clean. And honestly, you don't need to worry about that because that's gonna be covered by the outlet cover. So this is definitely the hardest part. You cut down the two widest angles right here and then cut, you know, maybe a couple more lines like this, like kind of like a comb. And then you start taking it diagonally to try to get down to the point that you want to. This is extremely fragile stone. So I've had to really take my time on those and it slowed me down quite a bit. So when we were picking tiles, we just bought like five boxes and we didn't look through what was in them. So when we brought them home, there was like two and a half boxes that were like, two boxes that were similar, and then one box that was like similar enough, and then the other ones were like super, super marbly. So we were only able to use, we used like two and a half of the boxes, and then we have the other half that were just like, this isn't usable. So if you do this yourself, and if you're working with stone, natural stone, natural stone Go through boxes before you buy them. And if you order online, buy extra boxes so that you have the option to go through and make sure there are gonna be enough that are similar. Take all your boxes. Even before if they, you apply, start putting anything up. Even if you think they all look alike, yeah. they probably will have a slight variance. So take all your boxes, mix them in a huge pile, and then redistribute them so that you have you know, so that one box worth is made up of five different boxes. Yeah, so. Otherwise, you have that. to start doing this. I am being. But it's good, right? We're, this is our first time doing this, so it's a learning experience. I want to know but how many just... people out there have been in my position before where you're up till 3 a.m., <laughs> busting your butt, not sleeping to make your significant other happy. And then... And then only to find out that, hey, can we knock that one out? Is and that maybe possible? that one and that one and that is one. Is that doable? We'll see. So one issue that we're running into is, I'm calling it the fake tooth <laughs> yeah. syndrome. If you've ever had to get a fake tooth, it's incredibly hard to get it to match the rest of your teeth. Anyway, so we're trying to replace it. Take a step back. You see what I mean by the fake tooth situation here. So it's just way too light. Totally off from the rest of the box that we had used for this area. So natural stone, it is not controllable. Buy a ton of it, mix it up. And Beforehand. You can go through the boxes like Katie's saying, there are some that are absolutely unusable because they just looked crazy. But also I think it'd be good to know that you're gonna have variants. So mix them up before you start applying. All right, I here we go. I think it will be good. Call me Michelangelo. So we finally finished placing all of the tiles and um, Jordan just did the grout today and it looks so good and I'm so happy with everything. Here is what it is looking like right now. Um, it's showing up darker in my phone, but the grout is dark right now it's trying to dry but you can see that um, like down here this is the color that it will be you guys the backsplash is finished now and we are so happy with the way it turned out i did not film grouting it so i apologize but i am going to show you really quick 
how I did it. And then I encourage you to go watch some tutorials on YouTube. There's plenty of great tutorials. These are the things I used to grab the backsplash. Nothing here is expensive. We got a cheap bucket. This mixer was like six bucks. This is just a grout mixer. You got a cheap sponge. This is called a rubber grout float or a rubber trowel. And then of course we've got our grout. This is the brand Mape. I don't know if that's how you say it. The color we did was frost. It's kind of like a light gray. So one quick thing, you're gonna to need to mix your grout first. These grout bags have the directions right on them for how to mix it, what you need, how much water, just follow those exactly. All right, simple enough guys. You're just gonna take your float. You're gonna get a bunch of grout on it like this. Pretend that I've got a big slab of grout. You're gonna start at the bottom and you're just gonna smooth it across. You're trying to cover the entire surface, even the tiles. It'll freak you out a little bit at first. It'll look like you're destroying your tiles, but you want a nice layer across the entire thing. And then you'll go back through and using that rubber edge, you're gonna put a little more pressure and give it that sharp angle and you're gonna squeegee it off the tile. It'll regather on here, it'll reveal the tile and leave the grout in the cracks. And then with that grout that you just squeegeed off, you can use for your next line, right? And then just keep adding more grout from the bucket as you go. That's really it for applying the grout. All you need to do after that is clean up. You're just gonna get a damp sponge and you're gonna wipe off any of the residue. It will gather quite a bit on the surface of the tile. So you'll probably need to do two or three passes. The last thing that we'd highly recommend, although it's not required, is we sealed our entire backsplash. We sealed the grout and the tile itself. This is a soft tile and it could absorb stains and oil stains and all that stuff. So buy impregnator, it's called tile and grout impregnator. And you just pretty much dab it down and get it all wet with the, with the sealer and then let it dry and then you're good to go. That's it for the backsplash project. We're really excited with the way it turned out. Hopefully you guys feel a little inspired to go after some projects yourself. Again, this was the first time I personally did a tile project from beginning to end. You work through the problems, watch more tutorials, you'll figure it out. If you guys do have any questions or comments, just make sure to reach out to us on Instagram or on the comments right here in the video, and we'll get back to you on that. We also have some exciting more tutorials to come. Me and Katie left a lot to do on our house when we built it to help save some money and also show you guys how to save money if you're building a house or if you bought an already built house but want to change it up. Hopefully these tutorials are helpful for you guys. Our next tutorial is going to be a fireplace mantle slash hearth. So we're really excited to show you guys that one and hope you tune in.